WBCB Hi, presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show's about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 no, no, years. No, 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 It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. Shut up! There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here solo and running on an hour and a half of sleep, so I even have less of a clue of what the hell I do than usual. <laughs> and Ted Efa on the other side of the glass shaking his fist angrily at me, almost in a, a uh, scolding-type fashion. Ferran, what are you doing? <laughs> oh goodness well we've got a fun and interesting show for you nonetheless here got some news to get into as we are just eight days away from wrestlemania yes the super bowl of wrestling the granddaddy of them all though vince mcmahon doesn't like it when it's called that because it indicates that it's an old thing but i mean this is the 34th incarnation of it so it's been around a while it's got some history but Nope, it's got to be young and hip and things of that nature. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, let's, uh, I was going to say, before we even get into things here, uh, phone's already going here. Let's go ahead and bring up, uh, all the way from the Windy City, Dan from Chicago. Dan, welcome to the program. Two weeks in a row, can you believe it? Yeah. One more, it's called a streak. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope both our baseball teams to get on a streak this uh, this season, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be a bit of a long one for the Phils. I know that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how the uh, the Cubs are uh, or the Sox are fair. I'm not sure which uh, which of the two teams. I'm not used to that. Two teams. Uh, two teams in one city. We haven't had that since. Uh, no, for me, for me, it's only one team. That's the Cubs. It's the Cubs. But, okay. Let's, let's get off baseball. Yeah, so, exactly. This isn't pro baseball. We. <laughs> so it's a whole other uh, show. This, the, this John Cena Undertaker thing is like a little. They're really going to the extreme by wasting, or not wasting, but waiting for like the week before WrestleMania to get this hype going because you would think that they would promote video packages and get some subscribers going if we know that the Undertaker is going to be there at WrestleMania. Well, I, my guess is that, I mean, since it isn't official, that. They're working on hyping all of the other things and figuring, all right, people are anticipating John Cena and The Undertaker, so we'll have that at the ready, but we're going to try to get people in with all of the other things, with Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, the return of Daniel Bryan to the ring, which was, uh, was announced this week, and I've got an interesting little tidbit on that. Uh, I mean, the numerous title matches that are throughout, the, the Cruiserweight Championship Tournament Final, uh, the triple threat match for the SmackDown tag titles. Uh, you know, who's Braun Strowman's uh, mystery, I guess, partner going to be to challenge Cesaro and Sheamus. I mean, there's a lot of different directions in which things are going and different ways to, that are going to bring people in. I mean, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, some people may want to see that just for the potential train wreck if Roman Reigns wins and the, you know... Uh, how many you know, tens of thousands inside the uh, the, the the Superdome? Uh, you know, just potentially raining booze down on Roman Reigns, pun ever so slightly intended. Uh, I mean, AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. That is a yeah. matchup that a lot of hardcore fans are looking forward to on that large of a platform. So there's a lot you, of different reasons. Where do, where, where that, do you put? Those matches on the card, though, like, potentially, like, if you want to get a hot start, wouldn't, I know the WWE title is usually, like, the last match of the night, but with Undertaker and Cena, but you got Lesnar and Roman Reigns, that's probably going to be the main event of WrestleMania. Where do you put the WWE title? Could you do what you did uh, years ago when, when Daniel Bryan fought Sheamus and put, 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 
I'm trying to, you know, since you're not Put it as the, the, the opening NBA match. Game. Well, as long as it doesn't go 18 here. seconds, I'd be all right with it. Right, right, right. You'd be all right with that opening? Uh, I mean, actually, as I say that, I'm, I'm more all right with it not being 18 seconds. But as I think right. about it, I, I think that that, as much as that would get the crowd off to a hot start, I mean, I could easily see one of the tag title, maybe the, the triple threat tag title match getting things started. I mean, you have to remember, there are also going to be two battle royals in this, so I don't know if they're going to do yeah, one during the pre-show deal. and one during the, the main show, or if they're going to kind of sandwich or spread them out, kind of like they did with the men's and women's Royal Rumble. So right. there's, it's a it's a good problem to have that you have this many intriguing matchups and you kind of figure, all right, what's the best order to go in to keep the crowd hyped up for these you know, already marquee matchups? I mean, you know right, which ones right. they're not going to lead off with. I mean, you can be pretty sure they're not going to lead off with Daniel Bryan and, and Shane McMahon against well, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Well, that could start out the crowd hot, too, with the yes, yes movement, but that could potentially close the show, too, because of what happened at WrestleMania 30 with you know, Daniel Bryan you know, winning the WWE championship over there you know what i mean at wrestlemania 30 that could close the show too and and again that's a good problem to have that you have four or five maybe six different matchups that you could theoretically close the show with and you know, where do you put them along the way that is certainly an interesting question but that also isn't to slight some of the other matches i mean the the two women's title matches for example are certainly going to be very good uh, I mean, the triple threat for the Intercontinental title, the Miz, Seth Rollins, and Finn Balor. I mean, that has some intrigue. The now fatal four-way match for the U.S. title as Rusev got added to the mix. So maybe they'll go with that because you know that the chance of Rusev Day, Rusev Day, the crowd will be all into that. Oh, yeah, that, that could start out really good. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, without you know, having any kind of booking knowledge and you know, not exactly one who has put together a lot of cards. I mean, I could certainly see from the crowd perspective a four-way matchup to get everybody fired up and, and you know that the, the crowd, I mean, not that they're not going to be already because it's, it's WrestleMania. It, it's, right, 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 right. It, it certainly has that lead-off to it. Uh, so they're going to be hyped no matter what. It's a matter of keeping that hype and that energy throughout what's going to be a two-hour pre-show and a four- to four-and-a-half-hour network special. Where do you put, what do you do with the Shane McMahon situation? Because he's sick, and do you do, you know, what Daniel Bryan made an announcement on Tuesday that he's still going to be, you know, Daniel Bryan's tag team partner. Do you do a thing where you could do a screw job finish where, you know, we don't know where Shane McMahon is the whole night and Daniel Bryan's going in alone and then somebody comes in and then attacks, you know, Shane McMahon comes in and does a screw job to Daniel Bryan and goes to Owens and Zane, or do you switch it to Daniel Bryan turning on Shane McMahon? Well, it's hard to say, and and for those who don't know, uh, even though the match was announced of Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, uh, Shane McMahon was hospitalized in New York this past week with a case of acute diverticulitis, as well as they discovered an umbilical hernia. Uh, This is all according to WWE.com. So it said that uh, Shane went to the Caribbean with his family and developed an infection caused by the acute diverticulitis. And uh, while he was being treated, they found out they had a hernia as well. And that's something that's going to require surgery once the infection clears. So you would think with those types of medical issues, because, I mean, I... I can tell you about the latter because I had surgery on it uh, about 13 months ago. So, I mean, I've, I've had that hernia surgery, and it's a rough go. You're hurting for a couple of weeks. So, I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where, I mean, if it wasn't bothering him before, if they just discovered it, he'll more than likely hold off. And as long as the issues with the diverticulitis clear up by a week from tomorrow, then he'll probably be good to go. I think it's just more so that uncertainty, and they're probably working on a backup plan if Shane McMahon isn't medically cleared. What about Samoa Joe, too? What about Samoa Joe being Daniel Bryan's tag team partner with the Indy Connection? That'd be a pretty good tag team match there. Samoa Joe has been 
mentioned in whispers and rumors, although you know how I feel about rumors, but yeah. uh, <laughs> not exactly the biggest fan of them. But uh, it, you know, it's one of those, uh, hey, we'll we'll see what happens. But, I mean, it's certainly not a bad suggestion considering you that it's do, been thrown out there. You could still... You could still this week say that you know this tag team match is gonna you know gonna go down with with Shane, and then something could happen like in the back at you know or whatever during Mania pre-show where they find Shane McMahon kind of like laid out from an attack, and he won't be able to you know what I mean to to go. I think the challenge with that though is that WWE has already reported yeah. on the medical yeah. issue, so. It, it's kind of a tricky slope when you're saying one thing but then saying another in the, right, the same right, right. vein. So I don't know if they're necessarily going to go with an attack. I think, if anything, it would be more beneficial to just be truthful and say, you know, hey, he's, you know, he had this, this medical ailment. He is not medically cleared to go and then be able to work around it from there rather than try to set up an out when there already is one. I mean, he's not able mm-hmm. to compete because of this infection. Uh, presumably, I mean, unless it clears up in, in, in eight days. But if yeah, to, to, it almost seems like overkill to have the already in place infection and then also have somebody attack him from the back. Right, that's a good good good, good point there. And what what are you thinking of this tag team match between Ronda Rousey and uh, uh, Kurt Angle versus Stephanie and Triple H? And did you by chance hear the Ronda Rousey interview with the ESPN? Mike, with the Mike and Mike show where he was talking about her MMA career and he's like, if you could go back in time and Ronda Rousey was kind of snarky with him and said, well, I'm not a time, you know, I can't go back in time. What do you mean? Did you, I don't know if you caught that one this week. I didn't catch that, but I can understand how some people react to that. They, they don't necessarily look in terms of hypotheticals. They look in you know, the here and now and what's going forward. Right. And, uh, I mean, as a professional athlete, that is something that is a challenge to do, but if you're able to do it, it's a good thing, and that's what makes some of the greater people as good as they are. You know, a pitcher who gives up a home run, they're not dwelling on it. They're working on getting the next batter out. So right. there's no sense in looking at, oh, if I had just thrown this pitch differently or, you know, thrown this slider instead of a changeup or something like that, yeah, then maybe that wouldn't have happened. It's like, all right, well, it happened. Now let me work on you know, this next batter and getting him out, just to use a baseball example. And it's funny, when I was, you know, like when I saw that inter- interview, I kind of went on YouTube last night and noticed that she does not like talking about her losses, her two losses that she had in MMA. She kind of gives attitude and, like, dismisses like it ever, it ever happened. I didn't even know she was like that. Well, you know, I, I didn't think she was like that. Uh, again, I think it goes to that competitive nature and uh, uh, kind of almost uh, recircling the point that, you know, not trying to dwell on the past. I mean, it, right. can you learn well, from those mistakes? Yes, but to continually answer questions about it when it's already happened, I mean, I could understand having that, all right, I lost, but now I'm moving on. And, and right. having that kind of, you know, why are you still dwelling on it when I'm not kind of mindset. Right. How do you feel about her role right now? Do you think she's better off being a heel or a baby? Who? Well, I mean, in terms of this, I mean, given that Kurt Angle is kind of a natural baby face and, and considering the history of Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, they, they're, they're kind of almost groomed in their roles. And I think had things gone the way WWE had intended a few years ago and instead of Kurt Angle, it was The Rock in that position, I mean, it would... With, there would be zero question whatsoever. Uh, I think it, it. a lot of it depends. I mean, uh, it depends on how she's looking to be presented. I think as far as WrestleMania, the babyface mindset is good to bring in people. She doesn't want to necessarily have people tune in to watch her get beat up. And right. I mean, and, and if you look at it realistically, I mean, Ronda Rousey, MMA fighter, Stephanie McMahon... Former wrestler, now kind of corporate executive and and mother, you know, you know, a matriarch in this case. You know, she's she's juggling parenthood and uh, yeah, yeah, and and running things on the corporate realm. Realistically, like, you look at that and go, all right, there's no way Stephanie can win. So it's more so about seeing Stephanie, who has been smarmy over the years and you know has had that uh, you know that power couple uh, type 
process going on to kind of see her get another comeuppance. Yeah, I hate when they portray her as being this evil, evil boss, and then, you know, we'll, we'll see it all WrestleMania week where she's doing all these behind-the-scenes things, hugging little kids, which is fine. I, I get what they're trying to do, but at the same time, too, you're portraying her as this, you know, mean, <laughs> mean woman on camera, but in reality, she's like probably the sweetest woman in the world. Uh, other, you know, doing her charity work. You know what I mean? It's weird how they put the two on TV like that. Well, it's a matter of separation. I mean, when you look right. at, you know, when you you look at, uh, goodness, I don't know, uh, Bruce Willis, for example. I mean, Bruce Willis and John McClane are two different people. You know, mm-hmm. his character, his role. No, I get that. You, you, I get yeah, that. you wouldn't yeah. expect, you know, you wouldn't expect Bruce Willis to go around in Hollywood saying, you know, yippee ki you know, you know, the rest. It right. just, it, it wouldn't, you know, it, it just doesn't, doesn't work out that way. So there, I mean, there is that separation and it kind of shows, all right, here's Stephanie McMahon, the corporate entity, the humanitarian, the charity worker. And then there's Stephanie McMahon Helmsley, the on-screen persona that you see. So it, it's two separate you know, two separate roles in a sense. You know, it's right. a role in character versus the actual person. Right. All right. Well, I'll let you go. I don't want you to be late for your for your break and everything. I know it's coming up soon. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm right around that time. And now the uh, the the boss is closer than ever, so I definitely have to <laughs> mind my p's and q's. Target front, get going. I'm I'm uh... No, 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 no. He 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 gave the wave like, who are you kidding? I'm not that kind of you know iron fist ruling. No. <laughs> Damn it, Ferran. Let's get going here. <laughs> yeah, we've got a break. Yeah. Come on, we got a break to get to. It's probably more like, yeah, you, I don't know why you're giving him the Vince McMahon voice. I mean, Ted definitely doesn't have that. <laughs> I, I sincerely don't think that, you know, that I'd have to do I something do to, I do that really... to all bosses. I do, that to my, I do that to my boss at work, and she's a female sometimes, and she just gives me this crazy look. She knows I'm a big wrestling fan. She'll tell me what to do, and I'll do it in the Vince voice, and she doesn't like that. Which you can understand, she's a female. She doesn't like that sort of thing, but it's, I do that to all bosses. So. <laughs> oh, how... Uh... Uh, something I don't even know where to, <laughs> I don't even know where to take that next week it'll be a streak next week it'll be there, a streak there we go yes for Wrestlemania uh, yeah Wrestlemania Saturday and all the hype surrounding it here I'm just trying to do what I can so I'm not getting told one, one last thing and nobody's talking about this and I'll let you go Asuka's gonna lose at the very place where the Undertaker lost the streak will die at WrestleMania 34, like in New Orleans, like The Undertaker did. Nobody's talking about that. Huh. Interesting. Nobody's saying that. Well, there we go. If that ends up coming out into the uh, into the foray, yeah. uh, you know, we've got it on record here. <laughs> no, I'm not like a certain rat that used to call, so don't worry about that. Oh wow, there's a. <laughs> I'm bringing out all the names from the past here. All right, we'll talk to you next week. See what you've done. Be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk. Oh wow. <laughs> Gotta love some of those uh, some of those old throwbacks every once in a while. Can't can't yeah. go wrong with Nick Cataldi's laugh either. Uh, all right, I'm gonna uh, thank you so all much right. for the call, Dan. I'm gonna no get problem. going here you. and uh, uh, see where the onions are being cut in the studio here because there's a, a tear in my eye. And uh, we'll come back with uh, with more stuff, including a look at the local scene from Ed from Northeast Philly on the other side here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. I'm Jean Coyle, President and CEO of Penn Community Bank, the second largest mutual in Pennsylvania and the 20th largest in the country. We have built a powerhouse community bank with banking, investments, and insurance. We have the technical expertise of those other banks, but we operate under a structure that has no outside stockholders and no quarterly earnings pressure. We have business lending, cash management, and up-to-date technology. You should bank here. Learn more about us at PennCommunityBank.com. Energy costs are skyrocketing. Now is the time to upgrade your old heater and air conditioning systems to more efficient units to save on your utility bills. Harris Comfort can also handle all your propane needs as well as providing sales and service on whole house generators. Harris Comfort is still family owned and has been serving our area for over 60 years, providing sales, service, installation, and peace of mind. Call 215-788-4596 or go to harriscomfort.com. Harris Comfort, still family and still local. 
You won't see termites crawling across your floor, but thousands might be devouring the wood in your walls, weakening the structure of your home. For over 50 years, termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley has been in the exterminating business. If you think you have a pest problem, they're the experts. Call them today at 215-639-5455. That's 215-639-5455 for TPPC. Termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley gives your home or business peace of mind knowing your pest problem is in their hands. Located at 1560 Bristol Pike in Ben Salem, they use only EPA-approved material applied by licensed technicians. Call Termite Proofing and Pest Control of the Delaware Valley at 215-639-5455. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. See, oh, he's got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have to I didn't give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking cave <laughs> Breaking cave <K-fabe. laughs> Gonna break something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are so we right. getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry flying solo this week as uh, Twitch. Well, I'll be joining him in a little bit. He is down at the MFPW Arena. They're actually filming a documentary down there and uh, interviewing a few folks. And uh, once I'm done with my on-air obligations here, they uh, want to have a chat with me as well. So that's pretty cool and interesting. Yeah. Strange how these things work. Anyway, a uh, little interesting tidbit here uh, in, a, in a good way, as far as good news goes. Uh, uh, congrats to The Miz and Maurice, who uh, they announced the birth of their daughter this past Wednesday. Monroe Sky Mizanin uh, was born late Tuesday night, uh, their first child. And uh, hopefully it's not going to be too much of a distraction for The Miz, as he'll be defending the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania in eight days. So hopefully not too many late nights changing diapers. And I guess that means that the countdown will be on for a lot of fans as to when Maurice will be back on the road with The Miz. So time will tell on that. Before we get into more stuff here, let's go on to the phones. We've got Ed from Northeast Philly. Ed, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Happy Easter. (laughs) Yes, that's right. Easter's tomorrow. It all just creeps up here, although I'm glad that at least hopefully warmer weather is upon us. I mean, March kind of came in like a lion and stayed that way. Uh, I heard Dean from Chicago was on. Yeah, hey, you know what? Some, uh, it, it's certain times of the year where uh, certain people kind of come out of the woodworks. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of him, he's get, his, uh, Chicago's getting a money in the bank pay-per-view this, towards the middle of the summer. Uh, yeah, there were there were a couple of different announcements. Uh, in, fa- in fact, uh, when, when SmackDown was in Pittsburgh this past Tuesday, WWE announced that the Extreme Rules pay-per-view would be at the PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh on July 15th. Uh, so, looking at the calendar, following WrestleMania, it looks as though six events are officially set in terms of venues, and then three more tentatively set up with cities. Uh, after WrestleMania next week in New Orleans, there's the Greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia on April 27th, uh, Backlash at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey on May 6th, and then, as you had mentioned, uh, in June, uh, Money in the Bank will be in the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Illinois. Uh, and then the aforementioned Extreme Rules, uh, the SummerSlam from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York on August 19th. And they've also announced a Survivor Series from the Staples Center in Los Angeles in November. And then also in unnamed arenas, uh, they're, they're noting Hell in a Cell will be in Nashville, Tennessee on September 16th. TLC in Boston, Massachusetts on October 21st. And Clash of Champions in San Jose, California on December 16th. So, uh, yeah, it should, uh, should be good going forward here. And literally, that was supposed to be a battleground in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and then they shifted a few yeah, things yeah. around once they got rid of the brand-specific pay-per-views. Yeah, because this list that I had back in the like beginning of the year is probably going trash now. <laughs> it, it's right there with a lot of people's um, March Madness brackets. Yes, <laughs> that's true. 
why I didn't Maybe fill one out. You can't get it busted if you don't have one to bust. Yeah, this is, that's true. Speaking of uh, a new work, Backlash, AJ Styles is going to be there, and Bobby Roode, Alexa Bliss, Oscar, Charlotte Flair, Strowman, Roman, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. Oh, very but, nice. I and WrestleMania, that's gonna. I think there's gonna be all title changes. Hmm. Uh, it may uh, it may fall in line with uh, just about what we saw last night at the MFPW Arena. As there were four different title changes that had occurred. Uh, very exciting night as uh, we have a new Supersonic champion, tag team champions, a new the MF Network champion, and a new middleweight medallion champion as well. So. A lot, uh, a lot of change in the works at the MFPW. Uh, the Lucas guy uh, pinned. Well, he hasn't. Uh, he, yeah, he lost the title a little while ago. The oh, uh, the oh, tag titles. So oh. no, this was uh, the tag titles were. Uh, it was a no disqualification, false count anywhere match between Unstable Getty Cahoon and Michelle against Primal Fears Omen and Gabriel. And Omen and Gabriel won the titles back after losing them a couple of months ago. Oddly enough, to Twitch and TJ Rays. <laughs> uh, Homestead Boys Club is having a show. New Moon Rising Wrestling. Uh, King Kalua versus Cujo. Shane Taylor's on the card. Crazy Ivan. Drew, oh, not Drew Gulak. The other Gulak. Rory Gulak. Rory Gulak, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a flashback. <laughs> for WWE. Indeed. And Rocky Wayne World Mark Angel Ty Ty Street or Ty Awesome and Ty Reno. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, I know that uh, time on uh, April 14th. I know that the uh, the great Bar- Harry Barnett has been lobbying to get me on over there, but uh, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll have to see how that all uh, how that all plays out. I mean, he is he is coming on over from uh, from England to check it out, so I might have to make at least an appearance. I'll t- I'll drop your name. <laughs> yes, well, that's all right. I've I've dropped it plenty of times. It doesn't do a whole hell of a lot. <laughs> They probably know who you are. Yeah, I, 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 I certainly hope so. I've been doing this for <laughs> close to a decade at this point. Uh, Actually, yeah, you, quietly uh, a week and a half ago marked uh, nine years since Eric the Loose Cannon Gargiulo passed the uh, the torch to me over here and uh, hosting this show. Yeah, where does the time go? That goes quickly. <laughs> it just uh, flies SW, on by. Uh, SWF. Mega Slam is coming to Bayfield, New Jersey in April 21st. Ron Simmons, Sid, Red Titus, and Super Crazy. Oh, Sid's going to be over there. All right. Psycho Sid, or whatever yeah. he calls himself now. Yeah, Sid, Sid Vicious, Sid time, Justice. 8 p.m. or 8 p.m. bell time. 6 p.m. is the autograph session. Uh, that should certainly be a lot of fun. Oh, I'll, I'll save that for next week. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say next week is gonna be a uh, a fun yeah, jam packed show to say the least. The uh, you know the the prelude and I mean all the I'm sure we'll have lots to, to talk about from the Hall of Fame ceremony. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Kara is running a show this afternoon at the Wrestle Factory. Ah, Young yes, at the Wrestle Brian Factory. Cup. Uh, fun, fun story about that. I actually got the opportunity for the first time to check out Chikara and the Wrestle Factory as, uh, uh, yeah, I was, uh, a guest to, uh, check out their Hour of Power, which is, uh, something that they have for their, uh, for their subscriber members, uh, like a, a live streaming type thing from, uh, from two to three last Saturday afternoon. And, uh, uh certainly a lot of fun. Mike Quackenbush has, uh, a lot of, uh, he's got a lot of cool interesting and unique ideas going on over there and uh he's been certainly doing it for quite a while and uh didn't exactly bring this up but uh he 
infamously was uh, part of uh, what we've known here as the remote from hell so many years ago along with uh, Sarah Del Rey and uh, at the time Claud Claudio Castagnoli better known now as Cesaro in WWE so yeah that that's longer ago than I'd like to think about <laughs> and Paige is in it's in Flicky's April 15th at eventually in Okay, it's uh, two weeks from tomorrow. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. All right, all right. It says two weeks from tomorrow. Uh, two again. Yeah, it should be, uh, should be good as well. That's about it. All righty. Well, appreciate the look at the local scene as always, Ed. We'll catch you next week for a big WrestleMania preview. and. We'll, uh, we'll get more into that on the other side. And uh, as, as mentioned, as we're heading into the week leading into WrestleMania, uh, as far as schedules go, USA Network issued a press release to announce their WrestleMania 34 week schedule, which starts this Monday night with, of course, Monday Night Raw uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. And then the following night, Tuesday, April 3rd, features SmackDown from Nashville. And this is where things change up a little bit. On Thursday, April 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern, USA will air WrestleMania's Greatest Moments, which gives fans a look back at some of the greatest moments in the history of WWE's biggest event of the year. And something tells me that not featured in that will be the main event of WrestleMania 20, uh, featuring Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and that other person that... The, the Voldemort of professional wrestling at this point. Uh, <laughs> next Saturday, April 7th, USA will air a one-hour special featuring the 2018 Hall of Fame ceremony from the night before. It'll air at 10 p.m. Eastern, so it doesn't conflict with the NXT TakeOver on the WWE Network. And at 6 p.m. Eastern on WrestleMania Sunday, USA will air a live one-hour broadcast of the second hour of the official WrestleMania kickoff show, simulcasting with WWE Network. Yeah, that's right. Two-hour pre-show and then a four-plus-hour event. Uh, definitely want to uh, to leave the Sanka at home for that one, that's for sure. All right, we're going to take care of a little bit of business, our second and final time out here. But first, oh, of course, how could I forget? Tonight is a hot way to end the month of March at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Starting at 8 o'clock tonight is... The return of a night of naughty fun with Kinky Quizzo. Uh, there we go. So wait, awaiting the, uh, the the raised eyebrow. Oh, Ted giving a very impressive rock eyebrow, the people's eyebrow over there. Uh, the rock would be impressed. <laughs> that's right. Kinky Quizzo. Get there early to get a good seat. And that's about as much as I can say about it without getting into more trouble. Uh, also, make sure to stock up on your favorite brews, as tomorrow the Broken Goblet will be closed for the day to allow their staff to be with their families on Easter Sunday. But make sure to stop back next Sunday, April 8th, for bloodies and brews all day. Not a bad way to WrestleMania pregame. Might have to stop over and grab one or a few myself. And great brews they are. Currently on tap is the Nameless Ghoul Ghost Stout. Also, the Irish Red Ale known as Escorted from the Building. The new 2018 version of Bubba's Tea Bag and the Blood Orange IPA, among others. Just a few reasons why it's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Please enjoy responsibly. Coming back, we've got more news, stuff, fun things, and... Also, uh, today in wrestling history with a pretty notable event from uh, about 33 years ago today. I think you might have heard of it. All that and more here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Chuckies and Pete's, proud partner of the world champion Philadelphia Eagles and official caterer of the Philadelphia Eagles Touchdown Club at Lincoln Financial Field is your favorite local sports bar and crab house. During Lent, what better place to eat than Chickies and Pete's? Chickies and Pete's has created some terrific specials for Lent. Try the shrimp po' boy with golden fried shrimp on a fresh baguette, or the limoncello seafood bake with jumbo shrimp and lump crab, baked to perfection. Or there's always the terrific Chickies and Pete's go-tos, such as the mouth-watering lobster roll, Lisa's blonde lobster pie, jumbo lump crab cake sandwich, or baby lobster tails, magic with shellfish, for Lent, it's Chickies and Pete's. Visit chickiesandpeets.com for locations and details. 
I'm Henry Carpenter, a certified elder law attorney, and we're Bucks County Elder Law, a life care planning law firm. We understand the challenges you face and the options available to you. With expertise in all areas of law affecting seniors and their families, we give your concerns the time they deserve. More importantly, we give you the compassion and support you deserve. My team and I work with your medical professionals, financial planners, and accountants to obtain the information and input we need to help you make an informed decision and to obtain the best possible result in any situation. Whatever your concerns, you want to work with an experienced lawyer who truly understands your situation and who truly cares. Dedicated solely to the practice of elder law in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, we can help you make decisions tailored to meet the needs of your family. As a life care planning law firm, we protect your quality of life while we preserve your assets. To us, you're more than a number, your family. At Bucks County Elder Law, we empower you to make the best legal, care, and planning decisions for you and your family. We invite you to call us today at 215-493-0727 to schedule a free initial consultation. Join us each Tuesday at 9 a.m. for Senior Legal Strategies right here on WBCB and to visit our website at buckscountyelderlaw.com. We all have the ability to touch the lives of those around us. To someone going through a difficult time, a text, a call, or a visit can mean so much. Reach out to the veterans in your life today. Let them know they're not alone. One simple act can make all the difference. That's the power of one. If you're a veteran in crisis or no one who is, visit VeteransCrisisLine.net for free 24-7 confidential support. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, March 31. On this date in 1985, the WWF held its WrestleMania Supercard. In the main event, Hulk Hogan and Mr. T defeated Roddy Piper and Paul Orndorff in a tag team match. On this date in 1996, the WWF held its WrestleMania 12 pay-per-view. In the main event, Shawn Michaels defeated Bret Hart in a 60-minute Ironman match to win the WWF Championship. On this date in 1997, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Roanoke, Virginia. In the main event, the Steiner brothers defeated Kenny Chaos and Robbie Rage in a tag team match. On this date in 2004, the NWA TNA held its weekly pay-per-view number 87. In the main event, Raven defeated AJ Styles, Abyss, and Ron Killings with Sting as special enforcer in a four-way match. This has been Today in Wrestling History, March 31. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you, and yeah, that's right, WrestleMania, the original from Madison Square Garden 33 years ago. Wow, where does the time go? And uh, what that pretty notable name from WrestleMania 1, uh, well, he had a little bit of uh, mentioning in the news. And the next page of the Not Ready to Happen Yet Brother book... WWE confirmed reports last week that they were, in fact, in talks with Hulk Hogan. The statement read, quote, We have had discussions with Terry Bollea, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan, about how he can help others learn from his mistakes. However, he is not under any contract with WWE. Now, Hogan then appeared this past Thursday at the premiere of the Andre the Giant documentary in Los Angeles, and... The documentary was collaborated by WWE and HBO Sports, and it was the first WWE-related event that Hogan has attended since his termination from the company back in July of 2015 uh, because of his, uh, yeah, the whole sex tape and the, the, the racist remarks and all that fun stuff that we're, we've already hit and rehashed so many times. But TMZ, they caught up with him at LAX airport flying in, and they asked whether he would be appearing at... WrestleMania 34, and he had this to say. Oh, people really want to know, are you coming back for WrestleMania? No, sir. It's not going to happen. Are you Are you going to come back to the WWE at all? God, who knows, brother? He's here for HBO. So the, so all these other... You know, I'm going to hit these guys one okay. one, right, one let's bro, get, we're let's so, get a lot over here, guys. Get so, a lot. So the rumor mill is false. Get, get a lot. There you exactly. go. This one, oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Rumor mill is false. Maybe someday, brother. <laughs> Maybe someday, brother. 
And that voice that you heard in the background there as well, you know, he's here for HBO. That was none other than the Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, uh, who still has a very close relationship with the Hulkster, uh, longtime manager and, uh, yeah, certainly a legend without question. Now, TMZ was quick to note in their report that they had asked Ronda Rousey about whether or not she was appearing at the Royal Rumble, and she had said no, and she ended up showing up. So... Just because he says it doesn't mean it's necessarily true. It could be hiding a little something, but I think in this case it's probably closer to true. And oddly enough, last night TMZ caught up with Hogan again at LAX. Do they leave there? Flying out of Los Angeles uh, following the documentary premiere was asked about wrestlers, specifically black wrestlers, wanting Hogan back following his racist comments that were released as part of the tape and all that stuff that was reported in 2012 but didn't come to mainstream light until 2015 and that's when Hogan was let go from WWE and here's that TMZ interview from last night you guys were rubbing shoulders with the top brass last night Whoa. Triple H everybody was was any progress made yeah we we, we uh we established what everybody already knew. I challenged Triple H. He's afraid of me. So, it's, you know, it's just what I told everybody. <laughs> but, I, I think people just want to know, like, was was there a step taken towards your return? Oh, I don't know, brother. We were, we were, all, we were all talking about Andre last night. What's up, big dog? I got to ask something yeah. serious. What do you think about Mark Henry's comment? What comment? He said that the black wrestlers in the, aren't, aren't ready to have you back. Oh, I didn't hear that, brother. I just heard him make a comment. Uh, Let's go. On TMZ about it, about he said uh, he should I should apologize, and uh, I totally agree. But not to the black wrestlers, to all the wrestlers. To all wrestlers. Yeah, what I said was way out of line. I, you know, and I, I'm forever sorry for that. But I, I never heard Mark Henry say that. He's my boy, man. So 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 potentially. I got, what up, man? Would, potentially, you're, all of the you think the, the black wrestlers will have you back? Because he's saying there's like. Well, I'm friends with all the guys, man. Yeah. I'm friends with all the guys. Come on. All right. Well, look, man. We we can't wait to see we you back. You, thank you. And we love you, man. We love you. Hey, rest rest in peace, Andre, man. Take care. Ah, uh, good old TMZ. Gotta love the stuff that they throw out there. At least for the for the most part, they've been very heavy on the bring Hogan back uh, train for a while, to say the least. And also of note, uh, well. WrestleMania being a huge show, and, well, it was also one uh, that John Cena mentioned appearing on Australian Radio Tuesday, said that WWE would be running the Melbourne Cricket Ground on October 6th. Uh, he made the announcement on Triple M Adelaide's Rush Hour with Jars and Louie. Uh, the venue capacity is listed at just over 100,000 people. And the Melbourne Herald Sun newspaper previously ran a story of the event and claimed that it would be announced at WrestleMania. So maybe a little cat being let out of the bag early. Uh, they went even more over the top enlisting Cena, Undertaker, and Rey Mysterio for the show while claiming that it would be a pay-per-view event with a potential audience of tens of millions. That said, with WWE expected to air the greatest Royal Rumble event on April 27th, it seems plausible that the Melbourne event could end up being broadcast on WWE Network. Although that, uh, man, that, uh, that would be an early morning affair almost similar to the Beast from the East uh, that happened on a Saturday morning Eastern time uh, of around, I think, 5.30 in the morning, if I remember right. And here's an interesting one for video game fans, as uh, noted on the Facebook fan page by John from Northeast Philly. The video game Duke Nukem is getting its own video, uh, it's getting its own movie adaptation of the video game, and has already found the actor to play the title character. And his name is John C. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Producer Andrew Form confirmed in an interview with Cinema Blend that as of right now, John Cena is set to star in the video game inspired movie, with Form saying, quote, he is, yes. We don't have a script yet, so that is confirmed at this point, but if he reads the script and he doesn't like the script, I'm sure there's ways that he could pull out, but right now, he's our guy. So, interesting uh, as far as the potential movie adaptation of Duke Nukem, the video game. I'll admit I wasn't a big Duke Nukem or any of those shooting game players, but I know that a lot of people were out there. To some Hall of Fame news. Yes. WWE has announced that uh, Bill Goldberg will be inducted into the Hall of Fame by Paul Heyman. Interesting decision, as you would think it would have been Eric Bischoff or someone more WCW related, but since those names seem to be fewer and further between in terms of availability and given 
Goldberg's recent feud with Brock Lesnar. It makes sense. Heyman can certainly chronicle Goldberg's career and do a doggone good job of it. And speaking of doggone, also WWE has announced that Jeff Jarrett will be inducted into the Hall of Fame by Brian James Armstrong, better known as the Road Dog Jesse James, which is not surprising at all given their history. Road Dog got his start in WWE in 1995 as Jeff Jarrett's roadie, a quasi-manager to help interfere in Jarrett's matches. And as I remember well, they were set to have a feud over who actually recorded that song with my baby tonight before Jarrett jumped ship to WCW. So a couple of different, a uh, couple of different of the inductors announced. Still a few that haven't been announced. Something tells me that they may be surprises for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony coming up this Friday. And also, I know we uh, we mentioned the Greatest Royal Rumble uh, earlier in the program. WWE issuing a press release Monday to announce that Triple H against John Cena is going to be part of that Greatest Royal Rumble event that will be held April 27th in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia at the King Abdullah Sports City Stadium. Uh, they also additionally announced two title matches, Cesaro and Sheamus against Matt and Jeff Hardy for the Raw tag titles, and The Miz against Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, and Samoa Joe in a four-way ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, it's an interesting, I guess, delicate balancing act for WWE as they want to advertise these marquee matches as early as possible, but they don't want to give away any potential spoilers of uh, who or what may happen at WrestleMania, who may hold the titles coming out of it. But then again, there is that wonderful card subject to change disclaimer added to wrestling cards because anything can happen. So, I mean, looking at the WrestleMania lineup, I mean, well, I mean, as far as the four-way ladder match, it just would be a matter of who would have the title as The Miz, Seth Rollins, and Finn Balor are all in the ladder match. And, well, if Braun Strowman and the yet-to-be-named tag partner win the titles, I wonder if it would end up being Braun Strowman and that partner against Matt and Jeff Hardy. But I guess it is hard to say. Still not a bad way that they uh, that they throw that in there. And also, interestingly enough, as a potential WrestleMania preview, uh, well, here's how this kind of went down. Becky Lynch substituted for Charlotte to team with Bobby Roode this past week on Mixed Match Challenge, which has been going on on Facebook. Charlotte missed SmackDown as well as the Mixed Match Challenge on Tuesday night, as well as scheduled house show appearances over the weekend due to a mouth infection that required dental surgery. Ouch. Rude and Lich defeated Finn Balor and Sasha Banks in that semifinal match to advance to the finals against Miz and Asuka. Now, presuming that Charlotte is medically cleared following the dental surgery, hmm... Wonder uh, how that would work of the potential face-off between Asuka and Charlotte in an official match on Mixed Match Challenge just days before their scheduled title match at WrestleMania. Hmm. Very interesting. Also want to let you know that the place to get action figures, replica title belts, sports memorabilia, banners, and more is at George's Cards and Collectibles coming up Sunday, April 15th at the Neshaminy Mall Sports Cards and Collectibles show from 12 to 2. A trifecta of guests. That's right, former WWE diva Jillian Hall, former WWE star Justin Gabriel, and WWE Hall of Famer Sonny. That's right, Tammy Lynn Sitch is going to be there. George's has three locations for all of your cards and collectibles needs. Their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown, in the Neshaminy Mall in the movie theater wing, and their newest location in the Oxford Valley Mall on the second level next to Charlotte Roos. For more information, go to georgescollectibles.com and follow George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. And, well, if you missed... Factory Fridays last night. Boy, did you miss a lot. As I mentioned earlier, four title changes all in one night as we crown new tag team champions in Primal Fear, a new The MF Network champion in The Red Scorpion, a new Supersonic champion in Soriano, and the new middleweight medallion holder in The Heir Apparent, Chris LaRusso. 
Now, what will happen next Saturday as the MFPW returns to the world-famous Monster Factory at 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey, and it is for one week from tonight for Not Chasing Mania. That's right. So many are spending excessive money that they don't have to head to New Orleans. Be smart and see great wrestling action without the flight, hotel, Uber, and more. One week from tonight, and it's at the MFPW Arena at 541 Mantua Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. Come see what the hype is about, as the Monster Factory and the MFPW were just featured in a BBC America story on how to become a professional wrestler. And check out the MFPW and all things Monster Factory on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, plus at monsterfactory.org. And check out past matches, bios, bloopers, and more at the mfnetwork.com. And Tuesday nights following SmackDown, head to the WrestleZone Facebook page where you can see MFing Tuesdays. It's a live look at the students, trainers, and alumni of the Monster Factory showcasing the unique Monster Factory style of pro wrestling training. Uh, we're uh, just about wrapping up here, it looks like. Man, where is the time gone? Uh, yeah, I guess we can get into it just a uh, hair early here. Uh, yeah, why not? It's my show, so I guess I can, you know, call. As long as I'm not calling anything uh, too out of the ordinary here, then I guess we can call an audible or two here. So, yeah, I guess uh, if I can find it here, since uh, Lucas isn't around, uh, how about if we get into the birthdays? You jerk. Uh, always one to get his shtick in. All right, so we've got one plus five Brucey bonuses because uh, apparently we had so many birthdays last week that they you know, couldn't spill over necessarily. So on this date in 1968, Naoya Ogawa was born, the Olympic silver medal winning Jukota, two time NWA world heavyweight champion, and innovator of the STO, as it stands for the Space Tornado Ogawa. Yeah, look that up on WWE 18. I'm sure that that's one of the many, 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 many moves that are part of the move list that you can create wrestlers with. Anyway, he turns the big 5-0 today. Now to the Brucey bonuses, things outside of the world of wrestling, and we've got five of them because eh, not much on the wrestling side of things. Eh, why not? On this date in 1934, Shirley Mae Jones was born. The, oh my goodness. Really? You're going to... Th- Mike Samsel walking in out of nowhere here. Giaquinto's gone. I want my rematch, brother. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I mean, it, he's, the, he's the guy to talk to, uh, Ted Efa over here. He's the, uh, he's the ball. He's got a close eye on me. Well, it'll be nice to have somebody in management that likes me. <laughs> oh, there... <laughs> Well, come on now. What do you mean? Bob didn't, you know, we'll talk about that off air. <laughs> it's probably better that way. Just in time for the end of the show and birthdays here. How the heck are you? I'm well. How about yourself? I'm um, good. I'll... It is mania season, so it the is Fugazi wrestling yes. fan has appeared. Exactly. Just in time for the end of the show. You're uh, impeccable. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, yeah. If you were more into it, you would have showed up at the beginning. Correct. That's, yes, That's where exactly. the Fugazi part of it comes from. So, yeah, not much in terms of wrestling birthdays, just Naoa Ogawa. The, God bless uh, you. Exactly. The former two-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion and uh, innovator of the STO. Hmm. Yeah. Space Tornado Ogawa is what STO stands for. Interesting. A little, little knowledge you didn't have. He turns the big 50 today and... On the other end of things, Shirley Jones, the Academy Award-winning singer and actress best known for her role as the matriarch Shirley Partridge from the musical sitcom The Partridge Family, and is one of four people to have won an asking, acting Oscar and a Billboard number 1 hit. She turns the big 84 today. The others being Frank Sinatra, Cher, and Barbara Streisand, for those curious out there. On this date in 1935, Herb Alpert was born, the trumpet-playing band leader best known from Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass, and individually is the only person to have a Billboard number 1 hit as a vocalist and instrumentalist. And grandfather of Yale. Really? No, not really. No. You can't back that up. He turns 83 <laughs> today. On this date in 1943, Ronald... That's an Ronald... inside joke right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> On this date in 1943, Ronald Walken was born, the Academy Award-winning actor who appeared in over 100 films and TV shows, including infamously demanding more cowbell during one of his seven hosting stints on SNL. Better known as Christopher Walken turns 75 today. 
And wow, I got like 10 seconds. On this date in 1945, Gabe Kaplan from Welcome Back Cotter turned 73. And on this date in 1948, Rhea Perlman was born. The Emmy Award winning actress from Cheers turned 70 today. That's going to do it for us. Mike, thanks for the cameo. And we'll be back next week with Mania stuff. Play us out, Nazi. One o'clock in Old Wales. Celebrating 60 years of broadcasting excellence, we're 1490 WBCB.